What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at FightfulWrestling.com. The biggest weekend in wrestling is upon us, and part of that big weekend is Joey Janela's spring break. But it's not just one night. It's two nights. Major attraction, and right now you can see it on Fight both nights. This is uh, unbelievable, and we're here with the man who's bringing it to you, Joey Janela. Joey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, made some pasta. It was kind of shit. I'm not really a good chef, but... You're cooking yeah. pasta at midnight, my man. Yeah, it's post-workout. Post-workout. Getting, getting that spring break pot ready. Getting that I, carbs. Getting those uh, carbs to feed those muscles. I admire that. Uh, you've got two nights of spring break. Now, I, th I'm excited to hear how that came about. Obviously... Night one, huge success. Why not do two nights? How was how was that brought up to you, or was that an idea of yours? Uh, it was just um, it was an idea of mine. Um, it was just we sold out so fast, people were mad, and uh, we weren't running at midnight, and uh, that was part of the charm. I felt like, um, but I also felt like we had to move to a premium time slot uh, with our show, and we didn't know. We also didn't know that uh, NXT was running that night. Uh, they switched their time slot from Saturday to Friday. So um, I came up with the idea to add a part two to it. And, uh, you know, it worked out pretty well because both shows are now sold out in under four minutes. And, uh, you know, something different this year. And both shows are going to be spectacular. Now, uh, the second show, The Greatest Clusterfuck. I mean, there have been some pretty yes. great ones so far. How does it get greater? This, I think I think we're going to have double the amount of people in there. Fantastic. And uh, we're going to up the ante on uh, the surprises and the names and uh, the wackiness. Uh, I, I want at least 100 doors for that match. So, uh, <laughs> Brett Lauderdale and... Uh, Danny DeMonto better pull out their wallets and uh, go to the Home Depot, every Home Depot in that area, and uh, get me those doors. Well, one of the names, Bogus Sting, is on this show. I was yes. about, I was about to tell you if if you if you weren't able to get the pasta done in time for our interview, we could call up Jeff Farmer and he could do a Bogus Janella interview. But I'm, yes. I'm fascinated with this bogus thing who was huge in Japan, mind you on this show. Yeah. It's, uh, that was something weird that just came up and, uh, they snatched him up and, uh, I was definitely okay with it. And, uh, that was one of our most, um, most, uh, retweeted and liked announcement, um, of them all, I think, um, was, was, was Jeff Farmer and, uh, you know, it shows you uh, what people are looking for these days in their wrestling. Uh, and we got him, and he's coming through. And uh, you know, he's gonna qu he's gonna make people question: Is that Sting or is that bogus Sting? You you had posted on social media the other day that nine one one was actually booked, but ended up not or ended up pulling out. What happened there? Uh, he said he had a family uh, engagement or something. Uh, day after we booked him and uh yeah i guess uh family comes first man but you know we tried you know if i had a list of all the names that fell through the last couple of years it'd be you know some of them are shocking <laughs> but uh who are some of them uh, man <laughs> feed me feed me one one juicy name akeem last year oh man was one for the and we actually, we actually got his dashiki and his little hat, and uh, um, yeah. You should have just booked Conrad <laughs> instead. Yeah, we could, we we probably probably could have um, at that point, but uh, yeah, something happened. His house was flooded or something, and uh, he pulled out that weekend. And uh, Dilo Brown was another one last year, and. Just Incredible was another one last year. It was going to be a duel. Just Incredible, Alvin Montoya um, tribute. But uh, yeah, yeah, we talked about him getting eliminated and going underneath the ring and donning the Alvin Montoya gear and coming back into the match. That fell through as well. And uh, no, last year did, you know, fans didn't know any of that. So, you know, everything was good. Well, uh, one of the things you did get booked, Rock and Roll Express versus LAX. 
do, do they do Rock and Roll Express have any idea what they're what they're in for, or vice versa? Uh, Oh well, Ricky Morton does for sure, for sure. He's been uh, been hit me up about it ever since. You know, uh, slipped into the Instagram DMs. I didn't think it was Ricky Morton at first, but it is Ricky Morton, in fact. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's quite. He knows what's going on right now. He knows what's going on on the scene. He knows who's hot, who's not, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's ready to go and. We're going to see some crazy stuff out of the Rock and Roll Express. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to see one of the last great Rock and Roll Express tag team matches. And uh, it's a pleasure to have them and have that on the spring break uh, card this year. And the man truly gives no shits. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I, I had a guy hit me up a while, like a couple of years ago. <laughs> Whenever they went in the Hall of Fame and they were like, got a scoop for you. Ricky Morton's going in the Hall of Fame. He's telling everybody that'll listen at this general store. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Piss off. And uh, as it turns out, Ricky Morton truly didn't give a shit about any WWE gag orders. So uh, I'm looking forward to the LAX match. We, we talked about people that have fallen out. Is there anybody that you, you've gotten in the past and you were like, damn, can't believe that that came to fruition and actually happened? Um... Great Sasuke was one. That was like somebody I wanted to book after the first thing. Like I said, I want to wrestle Sasuke next year, and uh, that that came that came together pretty nicely. Uh, he was one of the easiest guys to do business with, and uh, one the night the day before spring break, he he arrived at the hotel. We met him, we greeted him, and it was surreal. <laughs> See, seeing the Great Sasuke in the flesh, knowing I was going to wrestle him the next night, and. Uh, Man, that was uh, something else. You know, Takamichi Noku was a last-minute thing this year. Um, you know, he hasn't wrestled the States in 20 years. It's kind of spectacular uh, getting him up on board because we knew Onita um, he got double knee replacement surgery and it was emergency surgery. So, um, so Takamichi Noku is basically filling that void. Not saying you're not going to see the classic Onita entrance, but something crazy. But, uh, yeah, Onita from the Russell. So we got Takamitsu Noku versus Orange Cassidy, and that's going to be a uh, uh, wild match. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, a shame that Wally Yamaguchi passed away because he seemed like he would be prime for a cameo on a spring break. Oh, show. yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame because Funaki's in town as well. You know, it's oh. a nice little reunion. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, you know, we had a lot of we don't have a lot of issues this year. But you know, Eli Dragunov uh, was pulled off by WWE signing a contract, so we had to switch Masato Tanaka to the second night because we were going to do Masato Tanaka and Dragunov on the first night. So things had to get shuffled around with Onita and Dragunov, and you know. We made things work, and uh, things are looking pretty good. You, you mentioned the time change. How do you think that will affect anything? Because if there's one thing I remembered about the previous spring breaks was the start time was super late, yet it was the most engagement we got from a non-WWE event all weekend despite that. Do you think that uh, that will maybe affect the, the, the theme of the show? I don't, I don't know how to put that. Uh, the, the mood of the show, or do you think it will it'll enhance it for the better? All right. You know, that's why we're seeing, you know, we got the 8 p.m. time slot the first night. Second night, we got the classic midnight time slot. So, you know, we'll see what happens, you know. Um, the, no matter what, both crowds are going to be spectacularly hot. You know, it's going to be the hottest crowd of the whole weekend. Um, so I'm not worried. And uh, the way we're lining up these shows is going to be, you know, it's going to be hit after hit, and you know, and, uh, you know, which gives us good – Good possibility we might trend up against NXT on Friday night. Um, but, you know, that's a pipe dream. But, you know, if it happens, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to have the champagne ready in the locker room. And, uh, you know, it seems it, 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 for me saying that people would think I'm crazy and <laughs> impossible. But you have to realize uh, when it comes to gifts and retweeting and stuff, and using the correct hashtag for everything, there's a good possibility. So if you get a couple of good gifts in a row that go pretty viral, 
you have a good shot of trending up against something like NXT. So, you know, who knows? You know, uh, it's a pipe dream, but if it happens, you know, uh, I'm going to be bragging until I'm dead. So. <laughs> well, uh, what would you see as next for Joey Janela's spring break? I mean, you sold out one night. You sold, you sell out all the time. Then you sell out two nights. Like, what what do you do next? Do you try to move into a, an even bigger place next year? Because obviously it's going to sell out with the quickness. Yeah, I, I expect it next year the biggest indie crowd in, um, in the history of WrestleMania weekend. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm expecting next weekend and, and next year in Tampa. So, you know. Do, do got, the talks of got, WWE potentially like trying to put a kibosh on events like that ever concern you? I mean, it seems like something you would personally find a way around even if they tried. We have a contract locked up already. It's oh, already wow. been signed. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, it's already been signed, so there's nothing they can do. So if they kibosh all the other indie shows that weekend, you know, so be it. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Brett Lauderdale was ahead of the game this year, and uh, – he was in Tampa last week, and uh, the deal was done. So there's nothing they can do. And, uh, you know, so we're expecting something special next year. And, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be a, a wild wild crowd. And, uh, you know, spring break, is uh, Tampa is somewhere that spring break does happen. People go there for spring break. So As we we're going to have a little bit of fun. As we wrap up, you, you had agreed to a deal with AEW, and the big question was, will Joey still be able to do spring break? That was confirmed right off the bat, and I thought it was smart of them to do that because that was going to be the big question. Uh, how much of, of that played a role in you signing with them? A big part. Uh, it's the one that stuck around for the news. I didn't want to sign a WWE deal yet. Um, having too much fun. Um, and these guys are going to give me the you know, opportunity to still do what I'm doing right now uh, before I was injured and what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of months is going to, you know, play out through my three-year deal with them. So, you know, um, it, it, it's uh, very special that I get a chance, you know, to stick around and watch new talent develop. And, and with my shows and the Game Changer brand, you know, getting more involved with the non-Joey Genoa shows and, um, making sure I can develop talent for, you know, the future. And I, and I have, and we have, and PCO is wrestling at Madison Square Garden. And, you know, this year, uh, one year from his match with Walter last year, and Jungle Boy just signed to AEW. And I'm sure Marco Stunt, when he comes back, he's going to have a very much of a, a success. That has to be um, something you take that, great pride in. No, oh, absolutely. And this year, you know, we have a guy who is going to do the same thing. And, uh, you know, we know that for a fact. And, um, you know, uh, it's it, it's great that we can just scout talent like that and, and know that this guy is going to be a massive, massive superstar. Um and our track record speaks for itself. You know, it's it's not just me saying that and bragging. It's, you know, we've developed three major indie names in the last year from last spring break. Of a handful and of shows, yeah. Through three shows. And, uh, yeah, we do have a couple guys this year. And one especially who's going to be a, a, a massive, massive uh, breakout star. Uh, it might even be bigger than any of these guys that we've uh, we've dealt with. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's very special, and uh, it's going to be a very special time, uh, those shows. And, you know, this year was one of the first years that I could, like, 100%, like, I, I booked most of the card, and besides, you know, a few matches, you know, and, uh, you know, everyone has their hands in the cookie jar, and this year they really gave me free creative reign when it comes to storylines, um, you know, matches and um, promotional material. How because much? we lost John Car, we lost John Carlo to the WWE, so yeah, you know, we had to deal with that, and we we made it work, and we found new guys 
and we found new video guys to do my comeback video, which was the most the most viewed vignette I've ever done, um, most buzzworthy. So, yeah, um, we're, I think we're doing a good thing. How much did your injury play a role in you stepping up and maybe even dreaming bigger for this? Because a guy like you doesn't seem to have a lot of time to himself, and then when an injury like that happens, like did, did that accelerate it at all? Yeah, it did. I think so. And I didn't know I was going to wrestle at first. And, you know, we didn't even know I was going to wrestle a month ago. So, you know, I had I had these, the, my new production crew who works on, they work on Netflix shows, they work on TV shows. You know, we use the same exact camera they use for Daredevil and Punisher and True Blood and a lot of those shows. So I had those guys hold off on it until I was 100% confirmed by my physical therapist, who's also a former professional wrestler, WCW Crowbar. Crowbar! Yeah, and once he said it was okay to go, you know, he put me through hell, you know, but it was all worth it, you know. He was one of the only people, you know, by my side throughout this whole ordeal, and he, he handled me with great care, and uh, he knows I'm ready to go, and he'll be there at spring break, so... It's going to be a great, great, uh, great two nights of, uh, of craziness. Last question as we wrap up. You, you mentioned uh, your three-year deal with AEW. Has the clock already started on that? Does it start at double or nothing or when TV happens? Uh, what's the deal with that? Well, when does the contract start? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm already getting paid. <laughs> so, okay. you know, so, uh, you know, Dealing with that, you know, it's cool, you know, you know, receiving my first paycheck from uh, 14 years of <laughs> busting my ass, you know. Never received a paycheck, you know, really from, you know, wrestling. You know, it's always been from bullshit jobs I've done, which just to keep me rolling through till I get to this point. And, uh, yeah, the contracts, I think they officially, officially start May 1st. That's when... You know that's when things roll through, but you know we already got we already got handled a little bit with the uh, you know money wise, so everything's looking great. Joey Janela's Spring Break three Friday April fifth and Saturday April sixth both sold out shows, but you can catch them on Fight. Lots of great deals there if you want to combine shows as well. Joey, anything else you want to let the people know? Just uh, you know. Tune in on Fight TV. You know, uh, so it's going to mean, mean a great deal to me uh, because, uh, you know, I've never had a major injury and coming back, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, something else. And uh, that's why I haven't really been in the ring. I haven't really trained for this these matches next week. So I wanted to be all, all organic and I want to feel things out in front of an audience and, you know, test myself. You know, because, you know, I'm never really a guy who went to training every day and training a ring. You know, I always did it, everything in front of crowds organically and never stuck to a formula. So it's going to be great to see, you know, what my limits are. And I'm going to test myself in there. And you're going to get the same truly you know, you got before the injury. And I can guarantee that. Joey, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. No problem. Thank you.